The first flight of the SWIFT technology demonstrator validated flying control laws navigation and made a smooth touchdown while operating in a fully autonomous mode, and after some more flight tests, the Cabinet Committee on Security will approve the development of the 13-ton autonomous stealth unmanned combat air vehicle that will cost a few thousand crores. Several people have questioned that the SWIFT UCAF design never featured a vertical stabilizer, but the takeoff and landing video released by the DRDO shows a vertical stabilizer, that created some level of confusion. The SWIFT was flown with vertical stabilizer for initial flight test cycles, to validate data and test points, and as an additional safety margin to the platform, and it will be flight tested without the vertical stabilizer at a later stage. The footage also shows the SWIFT without a vertical stabilizer for a few seconds, but actually the stabilizer was not visible due to the camera angle and distance. The 13-ton autonomous stealth unmanned combat air vehicle will feature a tailless fixed-wing design integrated with a fluidic thrust vectoring nozzle, which offers the most aerodynamically efficient design configuration, and is often used for stealth platforms like manned and unmanned bombers. After media reports that the first flight of Tejas Mark 1A flying testbed has been slightly delayed, Group Captain H.V. Thakra has confirmed, that the Tejas Mark 1A flying testbed has already conducted its first flight, and he revealed a picture of a box of sweets, that was shared after the first flight. Hindustan Aeronautics is using the Tejas SP-25 as a flying testbed for the Tejas Mark 1A, and the aim is to get certification from the Center for Military Airworthiness and certification for the Mark 1A configuration in the next 30 months, before kicking off Tejas Mark 1A production. The production units will come integrated with dual pylons and weapon systems. The Tejas Mark 1A will start delivery from March 2024, and all 83 units will be delivered by 2029. In a significant development, the Facilities Management Division of Hindustan Aeronautics has released a tender for the construction of hangars for Tejas Mark II fighter jets at HALS Aircraft Research and Design Center in Bangalore. The Aircraft Research and Design Center has extensive state-of-the-art test facilities and full-fledged manufacturing infrastructure for building aircraft prototypes and test articles, simulation and analysis tools to support flight development programs, and these new hangars will be fully dedicated for the Tejas Mark II program. The Indian Army has issued a request for information for the procurement of 800 light armoured multi-purpose vehicles under by Indian category, that will be operated by reconnaissance and surveillance platoons of its mechanised infantry and armoured corps. It must also be able to carry battlefield surveillance radar, handheld thermal imager on a telescopic retractable mast, and an in-service 12.7mm machine gun mounted on a hatch. The vehicle must be modular in design, and offering the scope for future upgrades through simple modifications and facilitating subsequent development. The vehicles will be procured at 300 vehicles per year, and the delivery must be completed within 36 months from date of award of contract. Mazagin Dock Shipbuilders has launched an indigenous fuel cell-powered electric vessel. The vessel has been conceptualized and developed by Mazagin Dock Shipbuilders with Tato Advanced Systems Limited as a technology partner. It has 6 kW electric outboard motor, 10.2 kWh battery, 2 units of 2.5 kW fuel cell solution, that gives it a 22 hours endurance and can carry 6 people. The Indian Army has conducted a blitzkrieg type of exercise in the Ladakh sector, which is a method of offensive warfare. The Chief of the Northern Command evaluated the conduct of exercise blitzkrieg, that comprised using combined elements of tanks, motorized infantry, foot infantry, artillery and air force, to attack the opponent's defenses on a narrow front, and penetrating deep into the enemy territory leaving the rear and flanks to be protected by the elements following the strike groups.